Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our first lesson on radio and electronic theory. We're going to uh, discuss in this lesson the electromagnetic spectrum, as well as radio theory as it relates to aircraft. Let's just talk briefly about uh, radio waves. Uh, radio waves are longitudinal waves of electromagnetic radiation. And so they're obviously made up of photons. These properties of these waves are determined by their frequency. Here we have a little chart on the electromagnetic spectrum and at low frequencies, so let's say 10 kilohertz, uh, the wavelength will be approximately the length of the building. Then we increase the, uh, and those are similar to like radio waves that are going to be in the kind of that wavelength. And next uh, we're going to have our microwaves, which are going to be in the megahertz range infrared in our gigahertz and then we have our visible spectrum um, at approximately 10 to the 14 uh, hertz and the wavelength of that of those are in the uh, in the high nanometers so let's say 500 nanometers or so is the wavelength after that we end up in our ultraviolet uh, which have wavelengths kind of similar to the length of a or the size of a molecule then x-rays this the size of an atom and then a gamma um, rays uh, at approximately a wavelength of the atomic nuclei. Uh, there's also at the bottom, just if you're interesting, if we heat something up to certain temperatures, they'll emit wavelengths at, at these uh, different uh, wavelengths depending on the temperature. So like the sun gives off white light because it's something that's heated up to millions of degrees Kelvin. Talk about the frequency bands used in aviation. You don't need to memorize these, but it is good to have them somewhat be somewhat familiar with them. So near the the lower end, 108. So if you think about your FM radio, that's the frequency band immediately above what civilian FM radio is. So from 108 to approximately uh, just below 118, you end up with your navigation aids, your VORs, your ILSs. Uh, then we have air traffic control. Uh, in the 118s and then the emergency frequency hopefully you have this memorized by now 121.5 search and rescue if they want to talk to you on 121.6 and then a few other uh, frequencies remember your uncontrolled airports from your radio license 122.8 and 123.0 and 123.2 and then the en route flight service frequency is 126.7 and then ATC has pretty much the rest of those uh, frequencies on the right, it also talks, uh, so those, I should mention, those are VHF frequencies. There's also medium frequencies in use for the uh, ADFs, the automatic direction finder, which we're gonna discuss, as well as high frequency radio for long range oceanic communications. Um, but I wouldn't be too, too worried about uh, those at this point. Let's talk about some different types of radio waves. So in the atmosphere, we have something called the ionosphere and uh, just the high concentration of ions. So longer wave radio, so that's lower frequency. So we're talking about low frequency, medium frequency, and high frequency uh, waves bounce off the ionosphere and just kind of go back and forth. And so they can propagate for very long distances. So back in the 60s or so, uh, ham radios were kind of popular before we had the internet. Somebody with a ham radio set up could be sitting in Toronto talking to somebody in Australia because it's just a low frequency wave that just bounces off the ionosphere. Uh, VHF, uh, so that's all our VORs and our comm radios. That's for line of sight only. And so it doesn't go around the curvature of the earth. And you can feel free to insert some flat earth, flat earth joke here because it's just silliness. Uh, but yeah, they won't, uh, it's affected by the earth's surface and will not curve around it. Couple test questions. What frequency should be monitored en route in uncontrolled flight or uncontrolled airspace? Sorry, A one twenty six seven. So yeah, we should. That's uh, the frequency that we generally use. B is one twenty one five. The air uh, air to air frequency, or sorry, the uh, emergency frequency. So we want to be. If we have a second radio, we want to be listening just in case somebody's in distress. And C one twenty six seven and one twenty one five if possible. So if we can, we'll go for C. What advantage does HF radio have over VHF radio? So A, clear signal. That's not correct. HF radio has a lot of static. It's 
pretty terrible to uh, be talking on. Uh, B, longer range, so that's correct. An HF radio, remember the radio waves bounce off the ionosphere, so it's longer range, so B. Uh, C, lower cost, uh, no, it, it's not really lower cost. And D, more secured outside interference. Uh, I don't even know what that means, uh, so no, that's not correct either. That concludes this lesson on radio theory. It was super short, and uh, we'll move into our next lesson.